far as I think this goes, hi booktube. Let me, let me, let me, let me preface this <laughs> for a second. I recently decided to, uh, get into reading again, right? I used to be a really, really, really big bookworm, but then as these things usually go, I started high school and then I just like stopped reading because I felt like I was too busy and I had no time. And then of course now a days I'm just sitting here like, sit down and read a book? <laughs> Why? Um, but I had like, uh, I've, been, I've been meaning to get back into reading books regularly for a while. It doesn't really concern me whether the book is good or not as long as I'm reading something, right? Um, but then, of course, I finished uh, my college semester and I like right now have a lot of free time on my hands before I start working. So I was like, why don't I just crack open some books and read until I start working? With that being said, I decided to kind of start this new thing where like... Okay, I know a lot of people are going to judge me, so please, like, listen. Just li just hear me out, okay? Just hear me out. So, I have a favorite genre, and I know... D don't, cl don't click off the video. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> My favorite genre is romance. And I know, 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 I know. Most people don't like, like, romance novels at all. But hear me out. I am on a journey to try to find the best romance novel that I possibly can. Um, as of right now, I, I <laughs> put a bunch of books on hold at the library, but they're like taking a while to like order them because they had to order them. Um, and then I ordered another book, which is not romance, but it's another book that I wanted to look at um, off of Amazon, but it's not here yet. So I decided to go through my bookshelf and just read a bunch of books that I never got the chance to. <laughs> And this is technically not even my book, this is my sister's book, but I saw it a lot and I was like, why don't I just read it? Just know that there is a series coming of trying to find the best romance novel. It's coming, but I have not started it yet. But in the meantime, I wanted to read something. So the book that I picked was this one right here, which is Not If I Save You First. I'm going to add a disclaimer right now where like if you haven't read the book already, you'll probably get spoiled um, because I'm just going to talk about what happens and most likely I'll just tell you the whole plot. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the book, you should probably not watch this video. There you go. <laughs> Let's jump right into it. First, I kind of want to address the synopsis. Uh, the synopsis says, he has a killer on his tail. She has a beda bedazzled hatchet. What could possibly go wrong? Maddie thought she and Logan would be friends forever, but when your dad is a secret service agent and your best friend is the president's son, sometimes life has other plans. Before she knows it, Maddie's dad is dragging her to a cabin in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness and into a totally different life. No phone, no internet, and not a single word from Logan. Maddie tells herself it's okay. After all, she's the most popular girl for 20 miles in any direction. She's also the only girl for 20 miles in any direction. She has cut, she has wood to cut and weapons to bedazzle. Her life is full. Until Logan shows up six years later and Maddie wants to kill him. But before that can happen, an assailant appears out of nowhere, knocking Maddie down a cliff and dragging Logan to some unknown fate. Maddie knows she could turn back and get help, but the weather is turning and the terrain will only get more treacherous. The animals more deadly. Maddie still really wants to kill Logan, but she has to save him first. And on the cover, in, the, in this little corner right here, it says, Find the boy, save the boy, kiss, which is scratched out, kill, which is scratched out, make the boy pay for what he did to you. So, when I first picked up this book, I was like, sounds pretty intense. It sounds like some intense stuff is happening, right? This girl wants to, like, kill him, but she, but she has to save him because someone else wants to kill him. And I thought it was one of those situations where, like, Someone else wants to kill him, but I have to be the one that kills him, right? It has to be me. Um, so I was interested, but then at the same time, I felt like I wasn't the target audience. You feel me? Like, I felt like it was YA, and I kind of just hit the threshold of outside of YA. I, I wasn't sure, which is why I was so hesitant to actually pick up this book. I was like, I don't know. Maybe this is YA. Maybe this book isn't targeted towards me, you know, but I, I read it anyway. So let's let's just let's just kind of get into this synopsis, right? 
And this is the part where, like, if you don't want to be spoiled, you should probably click away now. You have the president's son, the, the U.S. president's son, which is Logan. And then his best friend, Maddie. Maddie knows Logan because Maddie's father is head of Secret Service. So he's like the president's bodyguard, pretty much. Um, and they're like best friends, right? Logan doesn't really have any other friends. He just has Maddie. So it kind of starts off when they're 10 years old. Um, they're going to this like party. It's supposed to be some sort of like peace thing between US and of course Russia. <sighs> the party gets interrupted because a bunch of Russian spies try to kidnap the first lady. Obviously they get um, really traumatized both Logan and Maddie about the incident because um, her, her dad has to rush in and, and get saved and a lot of people get hurt in this incident. There's blood. There's there's a lot happening. They both, I think Logan got hurt. So it's a lot happening at once. Uh, time skip to like about six years later. They're now both, I think, 16. Logan might be 17. I don't remember. But it's six years later. And Maddie now lives in Alaska. Um, her father moved them out there. So after after the incident six years ago... He quit the Secret Service thing and was like, we're going to move out to Alaska. Originally, I guess it was supposed to be like, um, he became famous for like saving the president and like her, uh, the first lady, which I didn't really understand because I'm like, how many times do the like bodyguards that are paid to like protect the president actually get famous for protecting the president? But okay. So he gets like a lot of attention. He ends up quitting he, and going to Alaska. I guess under the witness protection program they never directly say if they're with the witness protection program but that's what I'm guessing they're in the middle of Alaska they're not even in a town they're in this like shed just surviving for six years Maddie is like doing all types of crazy stuff like cutting wood cutting uh starting up generators fixing the roof she has like this she has like two hatchets a revolver and like uh several like knives they're like survival survival people out here they're like the biggest, the biggest thing that the book likes to emphasize is Maddie's letters. So over the years, Maddie has been sending letters to Logan, which you slowly start figuring out Logan is not responding to these letters. So eventually Maddie gives up. Maddie now hates Logan because she's like, he, he's no longer my friend. He's dead to me. He didn't respond to any of my letters. And when they're living out here in Alaska, they're in the middle of, the no of nowhere. They have no signal service. Uh, so it's like no phones, no internet, no no anything. It's just them out in the wild. Yeah, Maddie hates <laughs> Maddie hates Logan now. Logan really isn't responding to any of her letters. Maddie kind of stopped sending them after I think about like two years, and the rest of the three years was like her just being alone. Maddie has no friends. She doesn't go to school. She doesn't anything. Nothing. She's just out in the snow with the bears, with like wolves, with like in the middle of a forest. They're just there. Now we get to Logan's perspective. He's like older now at the White House. He gets himself into trouble at a party because um, this girl like takes a picture of him which obviously can give away his location. So um, he ends up basically posting the picture and uh, he like escapes to the bathroom and like posts the picture in private and he has this panic button and the panic button he pushes like lets everybody know that like he's in danger which is what saved him and his mom when she was getting kidnapped he had he still has a panic button but he like leaves it in the bathroom and escapes from the party and like disappears for like eight hours so his parents are obviously livid they're completely mad at him and uh he gets he gets sent to alaska basically until like uh his father finishes out his last presidential term which i think he's like on his like last year pretty much like he got reelected, and now he's at the very last year so they were like, uh, they're just going to send him out to Alaska until like he finishes out. That way they won't basically have to deal with him. Um, so they send him out to where Maddie and his fa and her father is. I don't remember, honestly, her father's name. Um, I'm just going to call him Mr. Manchester because that's Maddie's last name. But like in the beginning, because they're so young, the book keeps referring to their parents as like, Maddie's dad, Logan's dad, Logan's mom, and it's like, I, I would prefer if you just use their last names, but if you say so. Uh, he gets sent out to Alaska. Obviously, Maddie is not pleased with him. She's pretty much hates him. 
Um, and as soon as he lands, we find out he has like these two guards that come with him. And for some odd reason, uh, Maddie's father, Mr. Manchester, he only says that like to bring like two guards and that's like the minimum requirement, but like no more than two. Why? I have no idea. But, <laughs> um, so they're out there and they find out that like a big storm is basically coming. I don't know how bad this, like we don't know yet how bad this, the storm actually is, but a storm is coming. And so they're basically planning on like staying in, you know, they're not going to go out and like do much during the storm. However, it's like in the middle of the night, uh, uh, Mr. Manchester gets a call from like somewhere in the town where like he needs to make some sort of delivery with his plane and uh, before the storm comes in because they need something or else so and so isn't going to survive and they really need it before the storm, right? So he leaves out real early in the morning. Maddie is not pleased. He leaves out and like leaves his daughter alone with Logan. And like he's he's obviously nervous about it, but he still does it. Like he leaves Maddie alone with Logan with this like guy who like neither of them have like really interacted with or known for like six years. But Maddie and Logan are alone. Maddie wakes up early and like takes a bath and like Logan almost walks into her and like awkward teenage whatever. And then she starts getting like dressed and they're talking. I can't remember what they were talking about, honestly. But they're talking and talking and talking. And then Maddie decides she's going to go outside uh, and gather firewood. Which I was like, girl, you just took like a hot bath. Why would you go outside in freezing weather to get... Okay, that was, that was like a thing that I really didn't understand. Like I was like, maybe you should... Maybe you should wait. And like, it was like, I guess she dried off enough. But like her hair was still a little damp. But I was like... Doesn't sound like a good idea to go out in the cold after taking a hot bath. So they go, Logan tags along, and um, the two Secret Service agents that were supposed to follow and like protect Logan, they stay behind at like by the, the, the base camp. And I'm saying like, maybe, maybe you guys should like go with them. But like, Maddie's all like, oh, it's not that far, we'll be right back or whatever. I don't know what she says. She says something like that. So they go to chop wood. Maddie and Logan start talking and um, Maddie gets mad at him about something. And Maddie basically gets mad at him about him not responding to her letters. And he's like, what letters? I never got any letters. I don't know what you're talking about. For whatever reason, Maddie does not believe him, which... I mean, the first time he said it, okay, but like he kept saying like, I don't, I don't have the letters, I don't have the letters, I don't have the letters, and she still doesn't believe him. So that's when um, their conversation kind of gets interrupted by like this um, guy who has a gun and um, I don't know if he had his gun out at first. I know he had a gun and he was like threatening for, for Logan to come with him. Um, I, don't, I, I think Maddie tried to fight him, but he ended up pushing her off a cliff. He throws Maddie off the cliff and handcuffs Logan and then they kind of like argue and then he throws this like random key off of the cliff too and then he's like start walking and then him and Logan walk off. Maddie uh it skips to Maddie at the bottom of the cliff she's hit her head really really bad and she's like really like she's bleeding a lot. She wakes up and is all confused and frazzled and is like Logan's in danger so she goes to like look for Logan and she kind of catches up to where they were at the cliff, I guess. And she's like, well, she could do one or two things. She could go back and tell their people and get help, or she could go after Logan. And apparently she decides that she's going to go after Logan alone and injured. <laughs> Lord. Her reasoning for doing this was like, oh, well, there's a storm coming and it's going to cover up their tracks. Um if like nobody finds them within time so like she was like I have to be quick and like just go after them so Maddie goes to follow Logan and that's kind of like the premise of the story right Logan is like leaving like a trail for I guess anyone to find he's like kicking over rocks and like snapping twigs and like leaving footprints and stuff and all that the Russian guy he has this like pack he has this backpack with a phone and I guess it's like a sat phone 
I don't know, I don't know, but he's like able to communicate with his phone. So while he's like has the map out trying to figure out stuff, Logan tries to lunge for the phone, which causes them to kind of tussle and like it looks, it seems like he's going to shoot Logan. However, they the book already established that like the Russian guy technically like needs Logan alive because that's what his boss has said, so he has to like stay alive. Um and bring him in alive or whatever so we know he's not really gonna kill him but I guess Maddie was under the impression like he's gonna kill him so she jumps in to save the day however she just ends up getting captured too which I was like I don't I'm kind of huh Maddie ends up getting herself captured and like apparently the reasoning for it was she so so she basically kisses Logan and like does this like really French kiss and like Logan's like oh my god she's like into me or like freaking out or whatever right. So Logan thinks oh this is like her being in like being into me but then he finds out that like she's passing him the key through like mouth to mouth. Which I was confused because I was like when did she get this key that like was thrown off the cliff. She's apparently she somehow found this key that... The Russian guy threw off the cliff, got the key, and like put it in her mouth because she knew once she got captured that um, the the agent whose name is, whose name we actually find out is Stefan, I think by now. His name is Stefan. Stefan like pats her down for like everything that she has. And so that's why she hit it in her mouth, but when she and when she kisses him, she passes it over to him. He now has this key which apparently I didn't know what the key was to, but I guess it was to his handcuffs. So now both of them are following uh, Logan. They get to this bridge. It's like a really old, unsafe bridge. Um, she tries to convince him that there's a safer bridge. He decides not to do it. They get to the bridge. Um, Maddie conducts this, concocts this like plan where she gets across safely. Logan gets across safely. However, they make this plan to like trap Stefan at the bridge and like get away from him. They, I think they like burn the bridge or something and they end up running off. Both of them have been traveling for a while now. Um, both of them very like tired, very cold, very hungry, all that type of stuff, right? Maddie asks Logan again at the bridge if he ever got her letters. He says no. They uh, decide to walk. At this point, Maddie is kind of just out of it and on the verge of like literally dying. Logan carries her over to this like this um god what is it it's like a trapper's trapper something trapper's den where they have like uh heat and stuff where you can like start a fire and be warm so they got they go there and they're able to like start this fire they kind of chill and at this point i guess both of them acknowledge that they have feelings for each other so they end up changing and drying their clothes and all this stuff and like they have heat they eat some like berries and then the next morning they catch some fish so this is kind of where like the the romance really seeped in i guess it was like they were like laying down and cuddling and snuggling and all this stuff and they i think they kissed i don't remember if they kissed but it's like obvious like they care about each other now um at this point you're kind of like hey uh it doesn't really sound like maddie wants to uh kill logan and i thought he wanted she wanted to 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 kill logan uh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Maddie at no point was was the book, did she seriously like actually want to kill Logan? She says like, oh, I want to kill Logan, I want to kill Logan. But it's like not, it's like that sarcastic angsty kill that like teenagers say. She just is like, basically she's just really, 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 really mad at Logan for like not answering to her letters all those years ago. At the cabin, not the cabin, the trapper's den, we find out that Logan actually did get her letters and did not respond to any of them. The reason for this is because I guess he wanted to like protect, he wanted, he wanted, oh god, he wanted Maddie to forget about him in order to like protect her from like that incident where like the incident like six years ago that happened, he wanted to prevent that from happening ever again, basically from hurting Maddie. That's why he didn't answer her letters for like six years. Maddie is obviously real, 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 real pissed. So 
Maddie ends up like kind of like storming off to catch fish. They eat fish and then they're trying to formulate like this plan of what to do next. They decide they're going to go back to the bridge and get the backpack that Stefan left behind um, in order to get to his cell phone so they can call for help. They, they go and run to get the, the backpack. Stefan actually was like um, there and like trapped them. Logan went off to go crawl for it and Stefan captures Maddie again. At this point, I guess Maddie just talks on and on and on to him as a distraction. Logan ends up attacking Stefan and they hand, I think they're able to like handcuff Stefan or something like that. So basically, uh, they kind of tussle and like, I don't really think anybody gets captured. It's more like uh, Stefan ran out of time to transport Logan to where he was supposed to take him. So he's like, I'm out of time now. And he kind of like, He's giving up. Um, at this point, you're like more than halfway through the book. Um, you find out that you basically find out Stefan's story. Stefan's story is that he has a sister and he's doing this to save his sister. And now you find out, okay, who is his boss and who is he working for? This part was the most confusing way to explain what's going on. But basically, Steph. Stefan is this. The book randomly decides to start putting in this character called the wolf and how dangerous the wolf is and like uh, a boy is no match for a wolf and this the whole concept of this big bad wolf who's doing terrible things and it was just a big I feel like it was like a lot of symbolism but like because it was so left it came in so left field near the end of the book that it just didn't really work out for me. But it's basically this. So, there's this guy, they never say his name, they just keep calling him the wolf. He's, uh, <coughs> this, this, this escaped, I think he's escaped inmate. He's all big and bad and whatnot, and then he has a son. The son wanted to live up to his legacy and even surpass him, so he thought, okay, as a way to per surpass his name, I'm going to kidnap the first lady. That didn't work out and Maddie's father kills that that son. The wolf is now mad because his son is dead and there's no one to take his place. So the wolf is like, okay, I'm going to, uh, he's going to betray everyone close to, I guess the president or the first lady. I don't, I don't really know who it is. He, uh, he exactly wants to hurt but he was like he wants to hurt everyone that's around that that's where logan comes into play where he wants to kidnap logan and kill him basically um so stefan was the one who was supposed to kidnap logan and bring him to the wolf obviously stefan failed so he does all this and um that's basically stefan's story Stefan has a really sickly sister and they said like they I guess they captured her and it was like in exchange for Logan we'll give you back the sister that's why he's doing this so uh this other guy shows up that's also one of the guys from the incident six years ago he was like he, he popped up before but he probably pops up again he was like uh pretending to be a park ranger but like Stefan like shoots him and like you find out later that oh he's the guy from like six years ago or whatever so he pops up and is like trying to uh, basically take take Logan and the three of them outsmart him somehow and get him like tied up. Stefan explains like the whole wolf thing which Maddie for whatever reason was not patient enough to like sit through his story which I was like honestly wanted to know. So Maddie was kind of annoying me at that part. I was like Maddie shut up. But anyway. Long story short, that's what's going on. You find out that Maddie, that the wolf guy has Maddie's father, uh, which they were trying to get into contact the whole time. And that's why the, how they found out, hey, it's been like almost 24 hours and no one has like come after them or whatever. So that happened. Basically, long story short, they run off to uh, go kill the wolf. They ended up killing the wolf. However... Uh, he was, like, the thing was, the wolf was already sick and dying, so that's, I guess, the main reason why he was so, another reason why he was so mad about his son dying, and he had no one to, like, come up for his legacy. So, he kill, they kill the wolf, 
Maddie's father was captured and heavily injured, but they make it. Um, Stefan and his sister escape via plane. It kind of ends off with Mad uh, Mr. Manchester, Maddie's father, recovering in the hospital, and Maddie returns to the White House to live there uh, for an indefinite amount of time, and then it ends on a kissing scene and, uh, like, a reference to the actual title. I think that's the quickest synopsis I can offer you. I probably skipped over some details, but if you want to know more, you should probably read the book. Now to the actual review. Um, I'm going to start with the plot. So the plot of the book is actually pretty good. It's decent. It's not the greatest thing I've ever read, but it's pretty decent. Um, it's, it's a pretty good read for like if you're bored with like not much to do. It's decent. Um, granted, I feel like the whole wolf thing at the end didn't really fit in. Um, and there's, there was one of two ways where I could interpret the wolf thing. Because let me tell you. <laughs> there are like, there's like 30 chapters the whole wolf explanation thing doesn't come in until chapter like 26 which is one um this was kind of the story all along and it was supposed to be a dramatic plot twist and all this type of stuff and you never saw it coming the other way was kind of like uh it was just kind of thrown in there which I feel like maybe it was supposed to feel like a plot twist but for me it just felt like it was rushed. It didn't really fit. I wasn't really feeling it that much, but what do, you, what do I know? Um, I really wasn't feeling the whole thing with the wolf, especially with the way it was explained. It was just like, all of it was explained away in dialogue. Like, literally, like, Stefan sat down and explained the whole wolf thing through dialogue. And just having that whole exposition moment where everything is explained away is kind of like, Anything else about the plot? I feel like there were a lot of supposed like plot twists and, and ooh, you never saw this coming and oh my god. But like, it wasn't predictable. Like, I didn't see it coming, but like, I, it wasn't necessarily as big of a plot twist as I thought it would be. Character development. So let's, 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 let's. <laughs> my biggest, my biggest thing about this book was kind of like Maddie and Logan and Stefan. So Stefan's story was obviously explained away in chapter 26 with the whole wolf thing, which I didn't like. Maddie's character, I feel like, was not very balanced. So, like, I think Ma Maddie basically is supposed to be this character that's, like, really strong and and um, able to, to survive in the wild, wild, uh, wilderness. Able to survive in the wilderness and, like, she's really strong and she knows what she's doing. This girl is a tough cookie. However, she's also really girly and like she worries about her hair and her skin and her chapped lips and all this stuff. But like I feel like it doesn't mix well. Like the girly side of her wasn't really integrated well. Like I didn't even know she was a girly girl until like maybe about like halfway through the book. So I feel like those two aspects of her character were just not mixed well. Like I think she, the the... How do I put it? This book really emphasizes and goes hard on the Maddie is tough thing. But in terms of like Maddie is still kind of like girly is like I wasn't really feeling it that much. Logan's character is fine I guess. He's kind of like he's kind of like the damsel in distress for for most of the story. And like besides that I don't think he has too much going on. But like halfway through the book he suddenly gets really really possessive of Maddie and it's like ooh. <laughs> like he just says and does things where it's like don't touch her don't look at her don't don't even breathe in her direction and it's like all right dude calm down like you're the one that got kidnapped here <laughs> overall like I said I think this book is really good I actually do admire the writing of this book I actually like like it a lot and I kind of aspire to write this way it's just that the, the the book itself is is average it's average it's not the worst thing you'll ever read but it's not the best thing you'll ever read you know I think there was one line that kept being repeated and I wish I had highlighted them but I didn't and I didn't notice this until like I was at the end of the book and I was like man she keeps writing this line a lot it's like she keeps mostly in Logan's perspective it's like uh something happens but it wasn't due to the cold like someone shivers or someone sneezes or someone does something but it wasn't due to the cold it was like due to the dangerous situation like 
it it was said so many times that I kind of got annoyed. Overall, it's like an average book, probably like I don't I don't really like to do ratings that much, but like if it, if you have to give it a stars, it would be like three out of like five stars or whatever. It's a decent read. So now for the last segment of this video, for every book that I read, I thought it would be kind of fun to highlight quotes that were a little bit too much for me, right? Quotes that were just kind of like, I, it was too much for me or it kind of rolled my eyes in. Without further ado, uh, this is what I like to call the cringy quotes section. But it's not any disrespect because like I said, I, I love the writing style and I love the writing. It's amazing. But there are just some things <laughs> that, that certain books do that I just have to tell other people about and this is one of those things. I like your dress. Me too. Mainly because it does this. When the first lady started to spin, the whips of red fabric floated around her like a cloud. It's a twirling dress, Maddie wanted to clap. I know, the first lady sounded like a ten-year-old herself. Logan looked like he would never, ever understand girls, but he didn't bother to say so. The man shouted something in Russian, the words echoing off the hard floor and tile-covered walls. Maddie didn't know what he'd said, but she knew what he meant. That it wasn't over. This, that his cause was just. That someday, all of civilization was going to know and fear his name. Dear Logan, this is called a letter. It's like an email, but written on paper and sent through the regular mail, like bills. Your mom gave me this paper. Isn't it pretty? It's called stationery. When the hatchet hit the tree, its blade sunk so deep into the wood that most girls couldn't have even pulled it free. But Maddie was never going to be most girls. She remembered as she jerked the hatchet from the tree and thought about maybe trying it from farther away. Then her phone was in her free hand and she was screaming, Let's take a selfie! A bright flash filled the air and Logan's eyes burned while Charlie yelled, No phones! But my followers! The girl complained as Charlie ripped the phone from her hands. Logan watched her speak. Her voice was the same, but her mouth was different. Why had Logan never noticed her mouth before? Her bottom lip was fuller, but the top lip was shaped like a little bow, and he couldn't decide which lip he liked more. He knew he was going to have to do a lot more looking in order to choose, and it suddenly felt imperative that Logan choose very, very well. She certainly never expected him to say, you're different. What makes you say that? He backed away. No reason. Logan's coat was red, which was a good thing, for now. There's a reason the red coats were pretty much doomed during the American Revolution. She could have a plan and then hope and pray that Logan's stupid boy brain and stupid boy ego didn't get in the way of what she already knew would be a perfectly logical, smart girl plan. You must be very tough, Maddie looked like she wanted to smirk again, but Stefan went on, and also very stupid. Maddie shrugged at that. She actually looked like she might start chanting, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words from stupid Russian kidnappers can never hurt me. Maddie complied but not without saying, okay, okay, but please, just don't judge me based on my cuticles, okay? When your primary heating source is, wood burning, is a wood-burning stove, dry skin is your perpetual enemy. When he pulled out a small tube of Vaseline, she cocked an eyebrow. In Alaska, bears will totally kill you, but chapped lips will make you wish you were dead, so... Just because you're in the middle of nowhere doesn't mean a girl doesn't feel better when she's properly accessorized. She'd never seen him look like that, all stoic and broody and hot. Dear Logan, someday I'm going to write a book, How Not to Die in Alaska, A Girl's Guide to Fashionable Survival. Maddie never had the chance to learn Russian, but she knew a curse word when she heard one, no matter the language. Loosely translated, it meant, girls are so annoying. On this, at least, he and Logan seemed to have found common ground. The man looked at Logan again, as if he needed someone to explain stupid American females to him, but Logan only shrugged. Logan seemed to remember exactly who was behind him, that she was a real person with a voice and opinions. She wasn't some ideal. Dear Logan, the next time you see me, you should call me Dr. Maddie. I basically have a medical degree in first aid. I mean, I know there is no such thing, but there really should be. I can dig out a splinter uh, I can dig out a splinter using a safety pin or a pair of tweezers, which really what self-respecting girl doesn't have a pair of tweezers. I can treat burns and scrapes and lots of stuff way too gross to put on paper. So yeah, call me Dr. Maddie. But who am I kidding? You're never going to call me anything ever again. 
Maddie. Even in the moonlight, Logan could tell that Maddie's skin was as white as snow. He might have called her Snow White. Liar, you climb with your whole body, Mad Dog, and you know it, even a body as little and adorable as yours. Finally, that much adrenaline might make you strong enough to lift a Toyota off a toddler or whatever, but it, but it could also make your hands shake and your heart race. He's not my boyfriend. I can tell because I don't have his name drawn inside a heart on a single notebook, I swear. Maddie didn't try to hide the sing-song lift lilt of her voice as she spoke. She didn't want to. She learned at a very young age that nothing annoyed men, manly men more than girly girls, and if Maddie had one talent, it was truly exceptional girliness. Don't look at her, Logan shouted. His hands were around the man's throat. You don't get to look at her or speak to her. You aren't good enough to breathe the same air as her. You, Logan, Maddie tried. You seem to think this is a democracy, Logan. It's not. It's Alaska. So what do we do now? Stefan was actually asking. She wasn't some tag along, some annoying girl. She was a person with her home court advantage and he was smart enough to see it. She liked him for it, even if she also still kind of hated him for trying to kill her and messing up her hair and all. Dear Mad Dog, he said softly, I'm sorry I didn't write back sooner, but that doesn't mean I didn't miss you. I miss you every single day. Love, Logan. The other man picked up the wolf's knife though and he brandished it like a sword. Drop it, Maddie told him. You are unarmed and a girl. She's the girl who killed the wolf, Logan told the man, and she's not alone. To whom it may concern, I don't know what brought you to this little shed, but I hope you'll be happy here for however long you need to stay. I've taken the liberty of restocking the wood pile and bringing some new blankets and a few dishes, some matches and a mirror, because even though you may be the only person for 20 miles in any direction, most people feel better when they know what their hair looks like. Help yourself to canned goods. That's what they're here for. But most of all, be careful and take care of this place. It's special to me. Maddie. And me too, Logan.